In this video, we are going to be talking all things Achilles tendonitis. And in particular, I want to give my six top tips that we use in our sports injury and physiotherapy clinics to get rid of Achilles tendonitis. We are going to be talking in this video about how you should be stretching, strengthening, how you should be making sure that you've got the right footwear, how you should be massaging the area, the right amount of volume of training, and also potentially where the shockwave treatment will be beneficial for you. So it might be that you've tried one, two, three, four, or even five of these things and it's not been successful. But what I want to do is give you those six top tips, how you should implement them in your lifestyle so that you can get the winning formula to beating Achilles tendonitis. So make sure you're hanging around to the end of the video, but let's dive straight into the video. Firstly, if you are new here and you don't know who I am, my name's John, I'm the head therapist at John W Sports Injury. And here on this YouTube channel, we want to be doing three simple things to help you. We want you to get to understand your own body so that you can get rid of pain and weakness and stride forward and hit your health and well-being goals. Now, Achilles tendonitis. Firstly, and very briefly, what is the Achilles tendon? You may well know this, but the Achilles tendon is the tendon. So a tendon is something that joins muscle to bone. And in this case, it takes our calf complex, which has two big muscles, our gastrocnemius and our soleus, and via this Achilles tendon, it attaches into the heel so that we can move our foot and ankle. Now, what's going on here? Well, actually, if we get a um, dysfunction in this tendon, we can get pain in the back of the heel or the back of the ankle in that stringy-like structure that you can feel in the back of the ankle. Very painful, very frustrating, very common, particularly in people that like to do lots of repetitive sports, so things like running and walking and hiking and so forth. So what we need to talk about is what you need to be doing in order to get rid of Achilles tendonitis. Firstly, stretching. Now, what do I mean by stretching? Well, this in particular is static stretching, where what we're looking to do is take a muscle and elongate that muscle and hold it for 30 seconds. Now, I mentioned at the start of the video that the Achilles tendon is the tendon for two main muscles. That's our gastrocnemius and our soleus. Now, what we want to do is stretch out these two muscles. So here you can see the gastrocnemius stretch being completed. The key point here is that you want to notice that those back heels or those heels in general are flat on the floor and we're holding that stretch for 30 seconds. Then we're going to make our way into the soleus stretch, a very similar muscle in terms of where it's located and some of its functions, but you'll notice a key difference in the stretch that you can see here. This time the back leg is bent, but note the back heel is still remaining super glued to that floor. Apart from that, the stretch is very similar, but you should be feeling the stretch almost a little lower down in that leg. That way we're making sure that we're getting hold of both of those muscles that use that Achilles tendon. So you wanna be holding these for 30 seconds. You can do this two three four times a day and actually we can be doing this every day in order to get its benefits now moving on to my second tip which is around strengthening now we know that when it comes to tendons we need to try and load those tendons but it's very important that we're doing that progressively so we want to start trying to contract the muscles and put some load through that area but we want to do this in a staggered approach Firstly, if your pain is really acute and it's sore to walk or stand on the heel, what we can be doing is do some exercises lying down. So I call these ankle movements or ankle pumps where we're just looking to point the toes up towards the shin and back down towards the floor. What we're doing here is starting to get that Achilles tendon used to loading again, but actually without putting our body weight through it. What we can then look to progress onto is some simple weight bearing exercises where the key focus here is trying to get the knee over the toe. So firstly, a good exercise to do is something like the squat, where the key movement is keeping the heels flat on the floor, but what we're looking to do is drive the knee over the toe as far as pain allows. Now this isn't something where we want to be pushing through pain, but hopefully over time as your symptoms relax that you can start to get deeper into those squats. A similar exercise with the same purpose of driving the knee over the toe, but actually we can get further advancements in terms of that knee over the toe is an exercise like the lunge, where we're looking to lunge forward onto that problematic side and just concentrate on keeping the heel flat on the floor as we drive the knee over the top of the foot. If those exercises become simple, what you can actually look to do is progress that by taking that into a single leg version of the squat. So a single leg squat, what we're doing now is the same exercise with the heel being super glued to the floor and our focus being on driving the knee over the toe in this movement that we call dorsiflexion. But here what we're doing is putting all our body weight through one side. So it's gonna be extra load through that Achilles tendon. 
Now, before I move on to the next tip, one of the key things that we want to be doing in any tendon injury is something called eccentric loading. Sometimes this can be termed negatives, but what we're looking to do is do a movement where we're actually trying to decelerate whilst we're putting a load through that tendon. So when it comes to the Achilles tendon, this can be done really well on something like a stair. So if you stand on a, a stair and with the ball of the foot so that the heel's dropping off, and what we look to slowly do is look to drop the heel below the level of the stair, and that's the eccentric load of the Achilles tendon happening, and then we can push up into a calf raise. Starting doing this by two legs, and as you become more confident, you can just look to move onto one leg to increase the amount of load going through that Achilles tendon in the same way that we did with the squat exercise. So moving on, our third tip is around massage. So we know that whenever we're working on a tendon injury, we want to improve the quality of the tissue of the muscle that's using that tendon. So this is where we can look to work into that calf complex that I mentioned that we have our two muscles. So our gastrocnemius and our soleus. Now there's multiple things that we can do here, but in particular, things like massage guns can work very well. And I'll put a link in the description where I do a detailed video about how we actually use a massage gun on the calf area. But if we haven't got a massage gun, you can use things like a foam roller or one of my favorite tools, which is something like a lacrosse ball. A dense ball could be a hockey or cricket ball where actually we look to apply a downward force onto that ball while we roll that through the area and what we're looking for is those sore points. Once we find a sore point we can linger on that sore point while we hold and look to relax that tissue. But again, we're looking to spend around five minutes or so in terms of this massage tip. And again, I would be recommending that we're doing that every other day. Like with our strengthening exercise, what we want to do with our strengthening exercises is alternate those so that we're doing a day on, day off, because that allows us to see if we've worked too hard into that tissue. So with our strengthening and our massage, we're doing those every other day. And with our stretching, we're looking to do that every day. Now moving on, a key factor around Achilles tendonitis is to make sure that we're getting our footwear correct. So you want to be making sure that you have appropriate footwear and particularly making sure in the early acute stages that you're always wearing enough support in your shoes because what that's going to do is take away some of the force from the ground and actually give a little bit of a cushion into that Achilles tendon so less load is going through the area. So things like heel raises, so the gel inserts that you can get to put into your shoes can also be helpful to take away some of that load particularly in the early acute stages of the injury if you are doing sports like running or hiking or long distance walking you want to make sure that you've got supportive footwear that is correct for you i really talk about two important points being sort of the most valid here firstly they need to be comfortable people often ask me is this a great shoe for me well the right shoe is going to vary from person to person because comfort we can't underestimate the importance of that but if you are taking on one of the sports that i mentioned i would also look to get a gait analysis from a professional who can recommend you the appropriate shoe. Our fifth tip is around the volume that we're doing. Now, really, this applies to any tendon injury, but we want to make sure that we're putting it through a progressive rehabilitation program. So what we want to do is start off slow. So if you're doing a uh, sport or return to exercise phase program, there should only be one session dropped into that week when you begin that program. You need to make sure that that's okay and allow the body time to adapt. What I would then look to do is slowly start to drop in charge of extra sessions but no more than adding in one session per week. We like to work to a 10% rule where if you're taking something like the amount of minutes that you're exercising, if you can increase that by 10% in the following week, that's deemed the appropriate level for us to be progress progressing a 10% progression rate in order that we're getting more volume through the tendon but making sure that it's safe to do so. And finally, if you hit the point where none of these tips have been working for you and you've tried all of these tips, there are extra interventions. Something like shockwave treatment can work incredibly beneficially on a tendon injury. What we're doing with shockwave is what we're looking to do is use a machine that applies a shock or a series of shocks into the area. And actually we're looking to speed up the body's own natural healing response. So if you've found that the body's natural healing response without um, a form of shockwave treatment hasn't worked, what shockwave can do is look to penetrate that area to create micro trauma in the area and almost wake your body up in order to heal the tendon back. So again, you want to make sure that this shockwave treatment is being 
delivered by somebody who is reputable and has the appropriate and high-end machine in order to do so. It's not something that you can deliver to yourself. But if the five uh, tips that I first mentioned around stretching, strengthening, massage, volume and footwear haven't solved your problem after a period of months, then it could be a option that you look to take up. But if you have any questions and I haven't covered anything that you wanted from this video, please do drop me a comment and I will happily come back to you. I come back to all comments that are left on my videos. And also you can do me a favor if this has been helpful for you and you're gonna try some of these tips and you've made it this far in the video, well, that's wonderful. You can do me a favor and show me that this has been helpful for you by smashing that like button. Because not only will you be saying thank you to me and I'll be hugely grateful, but more people will be able to see this because they'll be shown it by YouTube and you'll be helping those people to recover from their Achilles tendonitis. And if you're enjoying this content and you wanna see more tips, more bits of information that's gonna help you on your health and wellbeing journey, hit that subscribe button button down below, hit the bell notification, and then I will let you know as soon as our next video drops. But speaking of next videos, here's another video to help you on your health and well-being journey. I'll see you on the next one.